because we're growing the organization and globalizing uh, the team. So if you ever meet me again, I'll probably have a new name. But um, give a little background about myself. Uh, I am born and raised here in Memphis, Tennessee. I actually uh, graduated from Carryville High School. Go Dragons. <laughs> Uh, and I went away from school at a small little school, liberal arts school in Atlanta, Georgia, called Oglethorpe University. So at the time, it only had a couple of thousand students on campus. We fit in like this cute little niche corner. Uh, a lot of people say our school looks like Hogwarts, and we actually had Quidditch on our sports team. But uh, so graduated from there with a sociology degree with a minor in psychology. So clearly, I. Didn't know what I was going to do, <laughs> but I kept on going. I actually got my master's at Christian Brothers University uh, and graduated from there in 2017 and then continued on and got my project management certification. And so I've been working for FedEx for about for over three years now uh, before I did nonprofit work, worked in finances, lots of other things. So. Uh, again, really excited to talk to you guys about career development and how you guys as strong individuals can work on planning your future careers today. So we'll go through a lot of that. So as far as the agenda goes, we're going to go over the definition of career planning. What is career planning? Then we are going to go over the career planning cycle and the specific steps we have outline as far as career planning goes. Then we're going to talk about some expert advice as far as uh, career planning from career developers, uh, career planning development teams, those sorts of things. And then we're going to go over Maya's tested and approved advice. So things that I've tried and I can tell you for a fact they work or they work for me. <laughs> uh, but during this conversation, during this presentation, I do have a couple of rules. The first one is uh, I really want you guys to be involved. We're going to have some interactive portions on it, so don't be afraid. Don't be shy. It's okay. Uh, also, you guys, I want you guys to relax. You know, this is not something with a lot of pressure involved. I have no authority to hire anybody, so don't think you have to put on for me. So I want all of us to take a deep breath, hold it for a couple of seconds, breathe it out, Breathe out the attention, just enjoy. And lastly, and I think most importantly, uh, this is a learning experience. So you're going to encounter certain things that you've already heard, that you uh, that's new to you. Feel free to take the good things here and leave behind the things that work, don't work for you. So feel free to do that. I don't want you guys to feel pressured that you have to apply every single thing I talk about, but this is some a good, good advice from people who have learned it or have done it. So what is career planning? Career planning is an ongoing process of activities and actions taken to achieve a career goal. It's really about enabling oneself to focus on where we want to be in life professionally, and it's about self-assessment of yourself and finding what fits between your capabilities and your strengths uh, compared to the career options that are out there for you. So during the career planning process, you're going to go through a couple of things. You're going to explore interests and abilities. So what do you like? What are you really interested in? What are you really good at? What keeps you up at night that you want to solve that world epidemic problem? Then you're going to identify strategic career goals. So based on those things that you said, I really love math, we're going to talk about how we are going to build career goals on top of that. If you love math and you're good at math, you have a plethora of options out there for yourself. Do you want to be a teacher, possibly a financial analyst? You want to be a CIA analyst, a mathematician? What are the options out there that fit with you? Make that your career goal. So based on that career goal, you're also going to develop action plans for achieving the goal. So you have your goal, now how are you going to get there? Develop actionable instructions for yourself that gets you to your career goal. And finally, we're going to talk about engaging with others who assist and support your goals. So career, uh, career planning and your career development 
are on a solo journey, you guys. You're going to encounter people who are going to help you and have the tools and the opportunities uh, in order to support you through your career planning. And let me know if I'm going too fast. I can definitely slow down. So we talked about what career planning is, but let's talk about the career planning cycle. And the cycle is defined as uh, this encompassing cycle of stages that, involve, uh, that are involved in discovering a potential career path. So we're going to start with self-assessment. So self-assessment is often the most, it's the most critical but often overlooked. Does anybody have any idea why self-assessment may be overlooked? Good. Um, I think a lot of people are willing to really critically evaluate themselves and they are quick to attribute a lot of problems to those things and that's kind of stuff like that. That's a great example. Anybody else have? Also, I think um, so many people, think, okay, this is something that I want to do, but this it seems like a really cool thing to do, mm -hmm. but is this, is, is this a fit for me? Yes. Being able to analyze, is this a fit for me? Is this something that I may be good at? Is that's perfect. What about you? Um, I feel like for self-assessment, it may be overlooked because, like, in today's society, we're like, we need to be around other people, but self-assessment may require you to be by yourself, so it may be overlooked because people neglect, like, spending time alone. That's, those are all perfect examples of why self-assessment typically is overlooked. And a lot of it has to do with, as, society, uh, as part of our society, we define what is good opportunities for you as a career. You should be a doctor. I'm pretty sure somebody's heard that. A lawyer, maybe a pastor, maybe you're really good at singing and somebody's told you you should go into that. But does that fit with what your needs and your wants are? That's a really good uh, a question that you have to ask yourself when you're in that self-assessment phase. So you're going to go inward and evaluate yourself. Determine what things make you happy or the things that you need in your life. Your financial needs are very important. What skills do you have that fit into the things that you want to do for possibly the rest of your life? Uh, other questions that you want to have, your lifestyle preferences, where you want to live, your passions, how do you work? A lot of us, myself included, are not early risers, right? And you don't want to go to a career where you got to be up at 7 o'clock in the morning, right? So... Uh, so it's really important that you're being self-aware, that you're asking yourself those questions. Uh, and then realize that self-assessment doesn't have to be alone necessarily, particularly for your career planning process. You have great counselors here, career counselors, who can help assist you in your self-assessment uh, for your career. So they probably have individualized counseling, interview practices, uh, personality and job career tests that they have, as well as hosting events like this that introduce you to a plethora of people who, are, uh, who have jobs that you may be interested in. And also, if you're already in the career field, you may want to go to your manager or somebody in HR who has those accesses to uh, things that can help with your self-assessment. Next, we're going to go into research. This is where we begin talking about brainstorming. We're going to start asking ourselves the questions about, now I know what I like, but what jobs out there exist that fit into that need? So you're going to start researching things like your job descriptions that are out there, standard qualifications for those jobs, uh, typical entry points, advancement opportunities, and other information that helps you determine this fits for my needs versus this career option. And I'm sure all of us could pull out our phones right now and ask Google or Siri or Alexa to give us some information about a career. So we have information at a plethora from the internet, right? But it's so important to actually make connections with real people because those people will be able to give you uh, insider perspective about what a career has and holds, what are the frustrations, the red tape that exists there. Make sure you're building those connections and they can also give you information about what you may want to do now to prepare for that next step. 
So then we're going to go from research to experimentation. So the one word that I have for experimentation is internship. You guys are in a great opportunity to do internships as often as you can. So doing internships, making sure that you have access to job shadowing, <coughs> uh, apprenticeship, part-time jobs, those are opportunities that allow you to test the waters out of it for a career, but not have to commit. And that's really a great opportunity for you to say, I don't like being a mathematician. Maybe I want to be a sports analyst. And fitting those niches together. Use that time in your, your experimentation phase to ask questions, shadow people, um, shadow projects that you may not have typical, uh, typical access to. Figure out the culture of a company or a department that you're interested in and then beef up your resume throughout that process. So companies like FedEx, we love our interns. We do so much to make sure that they're happy and enjoying their opportunities, giving them challenging but exciting work to do. So use companies' you know, enjoyment in trying to get you guys to become employees uh, as an opportunity to learn. Next, we're going to talk about the decision-making process. So you know what you like, and you've researched what fits into that, that skill set, and you may have had the opportunity to do experimentation, but now what do you do? This is the, uh, the time where you take those first three phases of the career planning cycle and combine that into a way that you can make a decision. The yeses, the noes, what works for me, what, uh, what doesn't. Um, it's going to take prior to the part. Oh, I can speak you guys. I do have a message, I promise. <laughs> um, prioritization as well as risk taking. Sometimes you're going to have to determine what is very important to me. So should I stay close to family or possibly move across the country for my dream job? Am I willing to take less money than I expected for that dream job? Or am I only willing to possibly take a job that isn't as passionate, so passionately fulfilling for myself, uh, but they have great health benefits and they pay really well, right? Those are questions you're going to have to ask yourself throughout the decision-making process to help you narrow down your choices. Um, but really, in those opportunities, when you're making those decisions, understand that you're not going to have 100% certainty. Uh, you're going to bump into things and you're going to say, I'm not sure if this is the right move for me. But as long as you're being adaptable, being having a positive attitude, and being willing to step into some of those scary things that you're not sure of, you're going to be able to make good decisions for yourself. Then we're going to move into the job search. So let's all be honest here. The job search is probably the most stressful part of this whole entire process, right? When I was in college and graduating from college, I was stressed out trying to find a job, somebody just to hire me. But this is where you take those first, those phases that you've gone through, uh, and you really apply that knowledge that you've learned about yourself, about your uh, research, uh, about the experimentation that you've taken. So be very clear and strategic on what you want Connect with people that you've met along the journey, when you've networked, when you've had these opportunities. Go on informational interviews as well as practice interviews as often as you can. And apply to jobs that you're not 100% a match for. A lot of people miss out on great opportunities because I never used SK, SQL or I've never led true full blown projects. Don't limit yourself just because you don't think you can do it. Let somebody else tell you no, right? So I think the really most important part of this is you just can't give up. It's going to take time. It's going to take you being consistent. It's going to take you really being committed. If you're a praying person in here, you're going to do a lot of prayers, right? But you should always put forth the energy in that job search because all you need is one yes, and that gets you in the door. Last is acceptance, and you got it. You did all this work in the, uh, in the first phases, 
and now you got your dog. So do your happy dance. If you're if you're 21, go out for a drink. <laughs> Enjoy that feeling that you have. Congratulate yourself. You have done something that a lot of people give up on. So make sure that you are enjoying those moments. Don't just work hard, play hard. I think it's really important to note that this is a cycle. You're not going to stop doing this. It's going to come back in your life. When you are done making one career goal, you're going to set yourself a new one. You should. You always should be looking forward. So you're going to come back to this cycle a lot throughout your life. Also, if you get to one phase and you realize that this ain't for me, go back to the current phases. There's nothing wrong with that. If you get to experimentation and you realize, I don't like math as much as I thought. Go back to self-assessment. Go back to research. See what you need to do or what you didn't learn about yourself in those processes in order to uh, figure out what the next step is. So now here's where we get interactive. Um, I had kind of two questions mm -hmm. uh, about the job cycles. I know you started with like the self-assessment, but do you think you have to start with self-assessment, or can you start in some of the other levels first? I think you should always be mindful of who you are at that time in your life. Uh, and we'll talk about this later on in the presentation, but the person that you are right now and the person you'll be in five years they're going to be two totally different persons, and they're going to need two totally different looks at life, but particularly careers. So I'm assuming things about you, but you may not have kids right now, but in five, ten years, you can have kids, and that will change the whole entire definition of how you do job search, how you experiment that may limit you. So be mindful of that, and that's where that self-assessment is. It doesn't mean you have to stop everything and just say, I have to go in a cave alone and figure out who I am, the philosophical questions. But it does mean, who am I, who am I and what do I need to do to fulfill myself? Does that answer? Yeah. Also, I, I feel like it was a great thought when you said, like, not limiting yourself to jobs that you may not like in your field. And I was wondering, is there, do you think there's a fine line between, like, aimlessly applying for jobs and like just trying to like test the water. Mm -hmm. I, I think there can be, but I think that fits into your niche. Again, I mentioned I'm a sociology major, so how I ended up in transportation, commercialization for international companies is beyond 19-year-old me, but you have to figure out what who you are again, and you have to figure out what can work for you. I grew into somebody who could do the job that I currently do. And I didn't limit myself to the person I thought I was going to be in 19. So, so I kind of aimlessly threw myself out there. But I also knew I'm not a quantum, quantum physics person. So I didn't apply for any scientist position. You know, I also cannot dance. <laughs> but I didn't apply for any ballerina things. But, you know, you get what I'm saying. Don't, you know who you are. You know what you can and cannot do, but you know the things that may entice you. Okay. So, okay, so we're going to go into what would you do. This is why I need you guys to get interactive with me. Uh, the scenario is Chelsea works in a growing company in the financial services field as a customer support analyst. She feels like she is ready to move into a management position but is not sure what things she should do to prepare. She has set up a meeting with her mentors to get their advice. The first question that I'm setting out for you guys is, where is Chelsea in the career planning cycle? I'll flip back to it to make it easier. Go ahead. Perfect, that's, that's exactly it. She's in her research phase, so she is learning. Uh, she knows herself well enough to know she's ready for a management position. Uh, and uh, but she wants to know what are the things she needs to do to get there. So I think I have a prize for you later on. I'll give that to you. Don't let me forget because I, I have notes up here for a reason. <laughs> so the next question I have is if Chelsea's mentor, if you were Chelsea's mentor, what advice would you give her? I want one answer from, from each person I select, but yeah, go ahead.
perfect. Anybody else have an idea? Showing that that's just more invested in the company okay. because that's a huge part of management. Okay. I think I see one more hand. Okay. Um, if I was her mentor, it seems like she's like financial services, and like I assume that maybe more of a introverted job. And if she wants to move into management, she should start learning maybe like more people skills because mm -hmm. as like management, you're going to be working like more on a social level. Okay. What about job shadowing? Did you think about that? Or what about opportunities to take on uh, programs that her company may uh, possess to help her get those skills up? Uh, there are lots of things that, uh, as a mentor, you may be able to provide. So Chelsea, I want you to go out and find a mentor, another mentor, but they're specifically in management in the area that you want to become. Or Chelsea, I want you to go out and uh, get on a project that can help out and you can lead it. And that'll show your leadership skills to people who may be hiring you. So those are great pieces of advice. And really one of the things that you need to ask yourself when you are getting a mentor is to have them be critical, asking you coaching questions about where you are in your career planning process. So I have... Um, uh, one last question, what actions, actions, make sure you, you note that, can Chelsea take now to know that a management position is right for her? Go ahead. Okay, I think um, from a little bit of experience, me like working in a job and then moving up to a management position, um, I think really like kind of, I guess, shadowing or looking into what the management position does. So yep. if you really are interested, at least for me, I was like, oh yeah, I can see myself doing that. Like, I want to that and then also like I was able to do a little bit of the management work so some shifts they'd be like okay you yep. can today do this or you know I'll show you how to do this um, just so you can get a feel for it and even see if you like it because sometimes like he was saying he was like uh, I was not ready for it but um, I think that's the best thing that she can do um, in order to see if it is right for her. Perfect. Okay. Um, possible, maybe not even plenty of actions Chelsea can take to figure out if management is right for her. So doing those shadowing, uh, having the opportunity to build those relationships, again, uh, having, if there are leadership programs in your company, FedEx has uh, what we call P2L, so Professional to Leadership Program, where they literally do a virtual reality simulation on how you deal with employees. Like a lot of cool things within companies to do those sorts of things. Uh, and grow your, uh, see if management or any other position may be right for you. Okay, thank you guys. You guys are blowing my mind. I'm not sure if you really need this advice, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about what career planning is. We talked about the cycles through career planning. Uh, now we're gonna talk about some expert advice on career planning. There's a couple of things up here uh, that I think are really important when you're planning your career. 
So the first one that they, they highly recommend is building in professional relationships. Exactly what you had mentioned uh, earlier. So we hear a lot about you need to have strong relationships, but a lot of times it's romantic or it's about your family, but we don't talk a lot about how building professional and career-focused relationships are super important. You have to make sure that you're nurturing those relationships in order to, uh, to grow your career. I said earlier, career planning and your career journey is not a solo journey. You're going to have to work with people to get to your next phase. So, um, so career leadership coach Dorothy Tannehill Warren said that it's important to understand that you must nurture your network all the time, not just when you need something like a job. If you wait to network when you're looking for a job, it's most likely isn't going to work too well for you. So what can you do to build those professional career, uh, those professional relationships? I highly suggest finding a mentor, somebody that you admire in your company, somebody that, uh, that you want to be like, somebody who has the skill sets that you think will get you to that next level. Mentors will always help you out. Uh, in opportunities to grow yourself. Also sponsorships, people uh, who are in higher level positions within your company or within uh, your university who may, uh, may be able to give you the, the large uh, view, the high view of where the company is so you can understand more. Um, you also really want to consistently nurture your relationships with those around you. So not just your management, uh, hierarchy, but also your peers, and even if you have direct reports, those, because you never know when those relationships are going to come back. You have a peer who becomes a manager, and you now want to get over there, or you have a direct report who goes to another company, and now you want to build that relationship. Uh, if you already have a strong relationship with them, you have somebody who you can talk to, get that insider's perspective, and possibly a job. So... The next one is don't assume that you know the job. So I'm going to ask, have you ever gotten, uh, accepted a job, and it sounds like a couple of people have done this, accepted a job because you thought it was going to be fun, or the money was going to be great, or, um, or you thought that it was going to be really easy, only to find out that it wasn't as easy as you thought, or the money wasn't worth it. Raise your hand. <laughs> I, I have for sure and that's because I didn't do enough research I didn't learn enough about that job beforehand to make an educated decision on whether or not that job was for me so it's really important that you do your research that you go back to that research phase as part of your career planning cycle uh, because like an iceberg you're going to only see the fun and exciting things the things that are flashier that people show you and not the hard work that comes with it. So make sure you're doing those. Internships, asking the right questions to make sure you're aware of what the job actually entails. Um, next is emotional intelligence can make or break your career. So did you know that studies show your IQ only accounts for about 20% of the success in your life? 20%. So as smart as you guys are, that don't always help. Really what helps is going to be emotionally intelligent. Emotionally intelligent, emotional intelligence is defined as the capability or the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions while also being empathetically aware of and understanding of others' emotions. So emotional intelligence is going to, oh, um, IQ will get you in the door if you're smart, if you have the capability of doing something, that will get you in the door, get you through the interview, get you through that, yes. But emotional intelligence is what's going to keep you in the building. Make sure that you're being emotional intelligent. Make sure that you're aware of who you are. Uh, make sure that you understand the things that you can control, like your emotions and your reactions to things, versus the things that you can't control, like people and their opinions. So emotional intelligence is a really key thing that experts say you have to have. It, it defines so many things in your life, your income growth, 
your ability to be successful not only in a corporate job, but also if you're uh, starting your own emotional intelligence has been linked to the growth in your uh, in profits for a job, as well as your actual physical health. So think about that the next time you're getting upset about something stupid. <laughs> second, uh, second to last is saying yes to the scary stuff. So do you guys think I'm doing a pretty good job so far? I'm seeing some shakes. You don't have, I mean, I prefer to lie to me if I'm not. Okay, okay but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've been petrified about this presentation oh. for a week. <laughs> but I say that because I want to be transparent, but also because this is something considered scary to me. Maybe not to everybody else, but public speaking is not my forte, not my cup of tea. But when I say yes to scary things in my life, it grows me not only professionally because I have peers here watching me, my management knows, so they know that I'm willing to do leadership-like roles, but it grows me personally. I know that if I don't have belt after this, <laughs> next thing you know, I'm starting Maya Mandalot. You know, Ted talked out the way, we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so say yes to those scary things, those things that you don't think that you're good at or that you won't be able to succeed to, you know, maybe that position, that management position that scares you, or that project that seems a little bit past your abilities, or having those scary discussions about wanting a pay raise. Say yes to those things so that you can grow, that you know you can figure out what your true limits are, and then you can also take a hold of the things that are on the other side of that. And lastly, we're gonna talk about being willing to have crucial conversations. So crucial conversations, or let me start with this. We have a saying, and we're very Southern, so we speak in Id idioms in my family. Uh, we say a closed mouth, don't get it. <laughs> if you ever heard that, you sort of know what that means. It means that uh, things aren't just handed to you in life. You have to ask for it. You have to open your mouth and ask for the things that you want. And that's what crucial conversations are. There are these conversations that you're going to have to have with people in your life to be able to get the things that you want. And a lot of times, just like the bullet point above it, we don't have those things because we're scared to have those conversations. We're scared to ask our boss for the raise or why we can't get a raise, why we can't get promoted, uh, why I can't help out on a project. Asking those crucial conversations, having those crucial conversations will really set your, yourself apart as well as uh, grow your career. that you're not going to be, uh, not that you're not nice or that you're being sure. confrontational. Um, I think you still have to have them. And you don't have to come at them completely negative. Be specific about the things you want. I would like feedback on why I couldn't participate. Okay. Uh, be, you can be passionate and say, this really meant something to me and I feel like that wasn't an opportunity I was given. You can... Uh, give specific examples. This is why I thought I was good because I did these things, I have these prerequisites, and what I'm asking for is not for you to give me something you don't think I deserve, but understanding why I did it so I can improve the next time. Okay. So, awesome. any other questions? And how do you phrase that? Your tone? Yeah, exactly. Coming across and, and 
again, I think it's important to control those emotions. Like, things get you upset, and if, if you're not aware of that, or if you are upset about something, then you're going to go into a conversation and have, like, come across that. I think somebody has something. And that's a very critical part of crucial conversation, feedback. This is a conversation, meaning it's communication, and you are going to have to be willing to listen just as much as you're going to be willing to speak. Go ahead. Is it important to have those conversations in person? Because I know a lot of people like to pop on the email. Or yes. You need to have those conversations in person. Hold people accountable. Don't be afraid to say, boss, I would like to know why, and let's schedule hour of time and we can discuss 30 minutes probably because after after 30 minutes <laughs> to get that seat. <laughs> but yeah have those conversations in person uh you're human and they're human and you guys need to have a human connection those are that's part of crucial conversation okay so we talked a lot about oh i'm sorry That's a so great piece of advice. That's a great piece of advice. In an email, you can, you can, you can hide behind a piece of paper. That's what it And oftentimes, people tend to read between the lines and read um, an explanation line or whatever. Or you said this, your tone can really get changed that way. So by having face-to-face -face conversations, you can still, to, to the right point, control your emotions. No, it's not if you know yourself and can talk to yourself. Talk yourself. Anger is going to take you in a whole other place, but if you say, I'm angry because of this and these are my hurt feelings, and you talk yourself off that ledge, then you may be able to bring that emotion down to a place where it's a reasonable conversation. And what that, to your point, Marty, what that leads to is what she mentioned earlier when you talked about emotional intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what gets you going. And then the point is how you can that so that you don't convey uh, if you're angry or you're upset or something, how do you accurately explain what you mean by not being rude or disrespectful, yep. etc., to the other person? And, and that's why the crucial conversations really come into play yep. where you want to have those frank discussions, right? About uh, particularly when it has something to do with uh, your career advancement, you have to be able to face some of that constructive criticism and understand where you.
And that actually goes to one of the points that I'm going to talk about in a few seconds. So we'll do that. We talked a lot about experts, career advice, about people who've developed plans and processes. Uh, but sometimes that feels a little far off because they don't seem like real people. But I am a real person, <laughs> and I have done real things to help develop my own career and get me to the places that I am. So I just want to run through some of that, as well as some life growth advice that I have. So make yourself visible is one of my first uh, key pieces of information I want to share. Uh, and it's a lesson that I've learned throughout my career uh, at FedEx and other jobs. Making yourself visible is so important. Uh, we are among so many bright and shining people out here who can do amazing things younger and younger. I mean, I hear all the time about kids as young as five learning how to code. And at five, I don't even know what I was doing. <laughs> so, uh, it means a lot when you have to make yourself stand out. So you need to make sure uh, that you're not limiting yourself, that you are being the force that you deserve. If you're good at something uh, and you're passionate about something, don't limit society's expectations on you. Don't, don't let society put the expectations on you, limiting yourself, uh, shrinking yourself. Make sure that you're stepping out and becoming visible. Next, you need to find yourself a rabbit to chase. And that phrase actually comes from one of my favorite books called Dish Jigger Starters. And it's about a veteran from World War II. Uh, he came back from the war and he raised seven daughters. Six daughters, let me fix that. Six daughters. And he lived, he was an African American soldier and he lived at a time where racism and gender discrimination and lots of these other things were going to be a trying uh, thing on his daughters, and he knew that, and he recognized that. So he taught them a lot of life lessons about how to navigate the world. And one of his lessons was chasing the rabbit that exists. Um, it, he took them to the dog track, and he showed them how all of the dogs chase this mechanical rabbit around to figure out who's going to be the winner, right? They, they use that to motivate them. And you personally have to find your own rabbit to chase. Not a literal one and not actually chasing anyone, but you need to find somebody in your community, in your school, in your workplace who has the skill sets you want, the personality traits that you enjoy, the things that really set them apart. Are they making good grades? Ask them how they're doing that. Ask people how they're getting onto projects. Shadow them. Really get close to them. Emulate the good behaviors that they have and see if that helps you move up and bubble up in your life. And I promise you, you'll become the rabbit that people are wanting to chase when you do things like that. Next is always be prepared for the interview. So I have a question. If I ask you for your resume right now, would it be up to date? For a lot of people say yes, that's good, because mine wasn't. <laughs> would you be able to give me your elevator pitch? You would? Could you do it now? You could? <laughs> That's really important to be prepared. Preparedness is half the battle of half the time, <laughs> most of the time. Uh, you really need to make sure that you have those documents prepared, that you're practicing for those interviews. Uh, work with your career counselor and get on their calendar and say, we're going to practice interviews for the next couple of weeks, especially if you're a senior. <laughs> I know that that's going to matter a lot because uh, you're about to get out into the work field. You're, you're losing your mind. Use people around you to do those things. Have your portfolio ready. If you have a, a body of work that is going to be really important for you to get that job, 
don't wait till you apply and they ask you. Have it ready so you can whip it out and say, here, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's have an interview. Because I practice already. Have your, uh, your star questions together. I literally have an Excel sheet with all the star questions that I've encountered throughout my interview process, and it's filled with my responses. Those are things that help you be prepared in the moments that opportunities show up, because they never show up the time that you want, right? And then lastly is remember career growth isn't always linear. I have taken a lateral move to get into marketing because it's an opportunity that I think will uh, allow me to grow to the levels that I want to go. Sometimes you're going to have to do that, and that's okay. Take that lateral move if it makes sense for your career development. If you have to step back sometimes because of life issues or because things just don't work out for you in your job, that's okay too. Sometimes you'll have the opportunities to jump 15 steps ahead and that may seem crazy, but if it makes sense for you, do it. Do your, develop your career and grow your career, career the way that you need to grow it, not the way that others think you should or not the way that it looks good on paper and on Instagram, right? So lastly, I want to talk about life growth advice because I believe in holistic care. I don't believe that I should only tell you about careers and then let the rest of you fall <laughs> the rest uh, the rest of you fall apart. So just some quick life growth advice uh, that I think if I would have learned this at your age, I would have really turned out a little bit better. <laughs> um, be the best version of yourself and give yourself grace. And the best version of yourself, of excellence, is not going to be the same as your neighbor or your best friend or your teacher. It's going to be your definition of excellence. And sometimes 80% is the best that you can give today. Sometimes getting out of bed is the best thing that you can do, but that's okay. Uh, but in, in the same line, give yourself grace. You're human even at 100%. You don't need to limit yourself uh, to always having to be amazing every single time. Give yourself grace and space to grow as you make mistakes, as you encounter issues, as you have life problems. So give yourself grace to grow. Build a friend committee. And I think this kind of goes back to that conversation piece that we had um, about finding somebody you can talk to and really rely on each other to, to talk about your emotions. Uh, who are your people? The people that matter to you in life, the people that have, have helped you, the people who you make money together, the people that you, uh, that will listen to you when you're emotional, talk you off of ledges, celebrate with you. Develop a friend committee because those are the same people who will chase rabbits with you, right? They're the people who are going towards the same goals or wanting to see you succeed just as much as they want to succeed. Don't let whatever define you. Uh, there's an Instagram post that's going around, and it says, uh, the person that you have, the, the version of me that you have in your head is not my responsibility or my problem. And I think that really fits into this, uh, this concept, because you shouldn't let somebody define who you've become and what you can do in life. So don't let your gender, your race, your sexuality, your status, don't let other people's opinions define who you are because you are you and you should be the only person who gets to define your capabilities. And lastly, life changes and so should you. Life is gonna change and we mentioned this earlier, you are going to be five years down the road, 10 years down the road, a whole family, kids, no kids, divorce possibly, lots of things in your life is going to change. You're going to get more degrees or you're going to do something amazing and your life is not going to be the same. So don't let your dreams and your limited vision of who you can become stop you from who you, can, who, who you are, who you can become at that time. So make sure that you're changing as things go that you're willing to evolve, be visible, uh, and really, again, leave that, take the good things that matter to you and leave the rest behind. And with that, I am done.
So if anybody has questions, I think we may have run out of time. <laughs> Sure. Crazy self. Her and yeah, go ahead. I'm outside of the 